Greetings everybody, welcome back. Today we will be doing a comparison between the new Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus with the last year Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And at the end of the video, we shall see if it's really worth upgrading from the Note 9 to the latest and the greatest Note 10 Plus. So let us first start off with the RAM and storage options. The new Note 10 Plus comes with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of onboard storage. Yes, 12GB of RAM. That is more memory than what you would get on a mid-range laptop. You also get a 512GB variant but I would skip that because there is already a microSD card slot on the phone and the Note 10 supports up to 1TB of memory expansion through the microSD card. Now the Note 9 comes with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of onboard storage for the base model and this goes up to 512GB of storage and 8GB of RAM for the top end model. So if you are comparing the base model, you literally have double the RAM and storage on the Note 10 Plus. You also get a faster, more efficient processor on the Note 10 Plus, which is the new Exynos 9825 and the Snapdragon 855 if you buy the Note 10 Plus in the US and China. And as of late 2019, both of the CPUs are top of the line and are manufactured using the new 7 nanometer process. I have the Exynos 9825 Note 10 Plus by the way. And as you can see from the Antutu benchmark result, the Note 10 Plus is quite a bit ahead. Also, as for gaming performance, I ran PUBG in HDR, ultra frame rate with anti-aliasing enabled on both of these phones. In this clip, you can see Note 9 running PUBG maxed out with HDR turned on and the game runs fine. However, the Note 10 Plus does give you a smoother experience. The frame rate seems a lot smoother on the Note 10. You will not be able to notice this in camera, but when you play it in person, it's quite obvious. But for day-to-day -day tasks, both of these phones will keep up without having any lags or any issues. And from my personal experience, 6GB of RAM is not an issue, at least right now. Maybe after the Android 10 update, we will start seeing performance issues, but that remains to be seen. I'm saying this because newer versions of Android are more feature packed, but so far on Android 9 Pie, the Note 9 is flawless. Enjoying the content? Well, make sure to subscribe and do press that bell icon so that you can get notifications to my latest uploads. Let's continue. Now coming to the display and the design, both of these phones have a beautiful, gorgeous, high resolution AMOLED display. Samsung calls the display of the Note 10 Plus dynamic AMOLED because of the HDR10 support. But as of now, good luck finding HDR10 Plus content to watch on your phone. Although you can record in HDR10 Plus with the camera of the Note 10 Plus. So that feature is new. And both of these phones have the best OLED displays you will ever see on a smartphone. The Note 10 Plus does have a slightly bigger screen, 6.8 inches versus 6.4 inches of the Note 9. And the best part is the actual size of the phone is almost identical. This is because of the ultra thin bezels which does make the Note 10 Plus look more futuristic in front of the Note 9. Yeah man, that sweet sweet 91% screen to body ratio. And because there is no space left on the top of the phone, there is a punch hole camera cutout for the 10 megapixel front facing camera on the Note 10 Plus. And trust me, this camera cutout is not intrusive in any way and during your normal day to day use you will not even notice that it's there. Samsung calls this Infinity O display. And see that white flashing light? That is the proximity sensor, it is also located under the display. Now there is a screen protector installed on the Note 10 Plus, otherwise the glass is completely seamless, there is no camera bump on the front of the phone, just like it is on the S10 Plus. And both of these phones weigh about the same at 200 grams, although the Note 10 Plus does have a slightly bigger battery. 300 milliamps more than the Note 9. I'm guessing Samsung might have done some weight reduction somewhere else inside the Note 10 Plus. Both the phones have an aluminum frame and Gorilla Glass on either side. You also get loud stereo speakers on both of these phones, although they have changed the layout of the camera on the back from horizontal to vertical. Now I do feel that the Note 10 Plus feels more premium, although looks of a phone is a personal choice. Oh, and did I forget? Samsung also got rid of the headphone jack. You know what, I still don't get it why every manufacturer is getting rid of the headphone jack but it is something we have to live without in the near future. By the way, you do get awesome USB-C AKG earbuds. It is also worth mentioning that the S Pen now supports air action gestures. 
that means you can wave your S Pen around in the air like a wand and the phone magically performs a few tasks. And you can use this in many apps like the camera to switch between scene modes. You can zoom in or zoom out. This also works in the gallery. You can flip through your photos. You can control the volume in the music player and shuffle through your playlist. And it also works in PowerPoint. So with the Note 10 Plus, you can wave the S Pen around and call yourself Harry Potter. Rest of the features like the writing stuff is the same as the Note 9's S Pen. The Note 10 Plus has a total of three user accessible cameras on its back. The fourth one is a depth sensing camera or time of flight camera. The smaller Note 10 does not have this fourth depth sensing camera. Now two of the cameras, the two times telephoto and the main camera are exactly the same as the Note 9. But the third camera here is a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens camera. So check this out. I'm standing at the exact same location and I've taken these two photos. The bottom one is the Note 10 Plus and I've taken the photo on the Note 10 Plus with the ultra wide angle camera. And on the Note 9, this photo has been taken with the regular wide angle camera. And just check that difference out. Look at how much extra area we've got on the ultra wide angle camera. Yeah, you can fit a lot more scenery on the ultra wide angle camera. Also, the Note 10 Plus, in addition to optical image stabilization, has something called Super Steady for video recording. You can use this by going into the video mode and pressing the hand button on the top. And this uses the ultra wide angle camera to add an additional layer of image stabilization. You can probably tell from this clip the top one is with the Super Steady turned on, and the bottom one is shot on the Note 9 with your regular optical image stabilization. One new feature on the Note 10 Plus is live focus for video. This feature uses the depth sensing camera and lets you blur the background in real time while recording videos. Take a look at this clip. It kind of feels like it has been shot on a DSLR camera. I mean, just look at that background blur. Amazing. And vloggers rejoice because the live focus for video also works with the front facing camera. And it works surprisingly well, although there's a lack of a secondary front facing depth sensing camera, which is surprising since the S10 Plus has it, but the S10 Plus does not have live focused video for the front facing camera. Hmm, it kind of feels like Samsung favors the Note series over the S series. However, the video and image quality on both of these phones are identical. Both of them have a dedicated night mode for the rear camera, which does capture amazing shots in low light but only the Note 10 Plus has a dedicated night mode for the front-facing camera. Speaking of the front-facing camera, the Note 10 Plus also upgrades the front-facing camera from 8 megapixel to 10. And it is a single camera setup, unlike the S10 Plus, which has a dual camera. And again, this is a good thing because a single camera uses less space on the display and the cutout is smaller. So you get more screen real estate on the Note 10 Plus. Also, the front-facing camera of the Note 10 Plus records video in 4K. And the picture quality of the front-facing camera on the Note are better. The pictures are sharper, the colors are more accurate, and they are not overblown. Although, I would like to see Samsung bump up the pixels of the front-facing camera to at least 16 megapixel. In 2019, 10 megapixel front-facing camera just does not cut it, especially if you want to crop the photo. And lastly, that 5-minute video recording limit for 4K60 is now gone. So now you can record 4K60 videos up to how much ever you want. For biometrics, the Galaxy Note 9 has an iris scanner, standard fingerprint scanner which is located at the back of the phone and face recognition. The Note 10 Plus takes away the iris scanner obviously because there's no space at the top of the display to put it, but the fingerprint scanner has been upgraded from the standard one to an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, which is now under the display. This uses sound waves to read your fingerprint and it works even when your fingers are slightly wet. In all honesty, I would pick the ultrasonic in-display fingerprint scanner over the iris and traditional fingerprint scanner any day because it feels more mature and obviously it's more convenient unlocking the phone just by placing your thumb on the screen. Note 10 Plus also has a huge 4300mAh battery and that is 300mAh more than the Note 9. I'm still in the process of testing out the battery life on the Note 10 Plus but it kind of lasts 2 days even with heavy use. Even the Note 9 has good battery backup so battery backup is not an issue on both of these phones. But hold on a second because that is not all. 
This year Samsung has upgraded the charging speed of the Note and now you get 45W super fast charging on the Note 10 Plus. And surprisingly enough inside the box you do get a 25W USB-C power delivery charger. And I did a 0 to 100% charging speed test with the 25W charger and the Note 10 Plus just takes 1 hour. Yes, 1 hour to go from 0 to 100%. That is impressive. Lastly, the new Galaxy Note has a feature called wireless power share. This feature turns your phone into a wireless charging power bank so that you can share some charge from your phone's battery with other wireless charging capable devices. And this is quite useful if you want to charge up your variables like this Galaxy Watch. You can also charge Galaxy Buds and other smartphones. But this feature is more suitable for charging variables like Galaxy Watch and the Galaxy Buds. And this is how I've been charging my Galaxy Watch. I haven't even opened up the charging cradle which came with the watch. Now let us take a look at the key differences between the two. If you upgrade to the Note 10 Plus from the Note 9, you will get 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. That is twice the RAM and the storage from the base model Note 9, so that's a huge upgrade. You also get new 7 nanometer processors which are faster and more efficient. The gaming experience is also better on the Note 10 Plus thanks to the more powerful processors. Then the Note 10 Plus comes with a futuristic in-display ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, HDR10 Plus display, triple camera setup, wide, ultra wide and 2x telephoto, 10 megapixel front camera with night mode, time of flight camera for depth sensing, no more 5 minute video recording limit in 4K60, slightly bigger screen in the exact same form factor as the Note 9, super steady video recording, video bouquet, S Pen Air gestures, kinda makes you feel like Harry Potter, huge 4300mAh battery, wireless power share, HDR10 Plus video recording, super fast charging which charges the Note 10 Plus from 0 to 100% in just 1 hour. Now you do lose out on a couple of things, number 1 is the headphone jack. Yes, the Note 10 Plus does not have a headphone jack and no headphone jack is not coming back. Almost every flagship phone in the market does not have a headphone jack so this is not an issue. The second thing is the notification LED. The top bezel of the Note 10 Plus is so thin that there is no space to put an LED over there. So they've gotten rid of the notification LED. Although you do have always on display, the iris scanner is also gone. And second thing is there is a hole in the display for the front facing camera. Now this might be a problem but honestly I don't feel like it's a problem. Most of the times you don't even notice that the hole is there. Oh and one more thing I totally forgot is that they have removed the heart rate and the blood oxygen saturation sensor which was there on the Note 9 and it's even there on the S10 Plus. So kind of puzzled with this decision of the removal of the heart rate sensor. But instead of that we do get an RGB light sensor for the camera. And the 3D pressure sensitive home button is also gone. They might have removed it because of the in display fingerprint scanner. I don't think many reviewers on YouTube will tell you this but I think it's very important to be honest about what's missing on the new phone. So these are really the key differences setting the Note 10 Plus apart from the old Galaxy Note 9. There are some extra features on the Note 10's version of Android but they aren't that major and should not be a deciding factor. By the way, I've already made a video showing you what's new with the Note 10 Plus so you might want to check that out. Now coming to pricing, the Note 9 is significantly less expensive than the new Note 10 Plus. You might want to check out the latest pricing on Amazon or with your local Samsung retailer. So should you upgrade to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus from the Note 9? Well, despite all the new features, I don't think there's a reason to upgrade since the Note 9 is already a super powerful and a fantastic smartphone with excellent specification. Heck, it even has the headphone jack which is a dying breed in 2019. Also, Note 9 is able to run all the latest games without any problems, although the gaming experience is not as smooth as the Note 10 Plus. But hey, you guys have just seen PUBG running in HDR and everything was maxed out. So even after one year, the Note 9 is still a really good smartphone to own. So if you already own the Note 9, keep it for another year. But if you have a smartphone which is older than 2 years like the S8, Note 8 or even the S9, then the Galaxy Note 10 Plus will be a major upgrade. 
and if you are looking for an upgrade from an iPhone or if you want the latest and the greatest Android phone right now, then look no further. Note 10 Plus is the answer. Alright guys, that is it for the comparison. I hope you find this video useful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and do follow me on my Instagram account. All the links are down in the video description. So I will see you guys next time.